What you're about to listen to is a Bri Fi production. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bri Fi Podcast. I'm your host, Bri Fi, your comics guy, and this week on the podcast, not only do we have our nifty nerd news, um, we also have a really cool comic that I want to interview or interview um review for you guys and that is called cage it's issues one through four which is the entire series it's by um gindy tartakovsky which the name is really hard for me to say and maybe you guys just hearing it uh doesn't mean anything to you but you may have heard of a cartoon called dexter's lab uh back when we were growing up or younger uh one of my favorite cartoons and this guy was the creator of that. Uh, he he created that. I think he did art on it as well. Uh, so some really cool stuff. Well, I think it was 2016 when Cage uh, came out and he was behind it. He was the arter, arter. He was the writer and the artist uh, behind it. So I desperately wanted to read it. Uh, back then, you know, I was still on... Uh, I think, yeah, I think I'd made the jump to Marvel Unlimited back then. So, um, you know, waiting for it to come out on Marvel Unlimited. And then it just kind of got left behind, uh, sadly. You know, I I picked up other things and bigger series that I was reading. And Cage kind of just fell lower and lower uh, just on my radar until finally I was going through my library that I have saved on my on my Marvel Unlimited app, and I was like, "Oh shit, man! I totally forgot about a cage. Let's yeah, let's check it out. Let's uh, give it a read." Um, I asked you guys, "Hey, what do you want me to review?" When I had Cage all ready to go, had it like you know, I had assumed that you guys were going to pick that, and no, you didn't. You guys picked Deadpool last week, <laughs> so we talked about Deadpool and my feelings on that, and how I was kind of wishy washy on it. Like I don't know, I just. I wasn't as gun ho about Deadpool as I thought. I wasn't guns akimbo about Deadpool uh, as I am Cage. But now this week we're talking about Cage. Really excited, really stoked. So we'll get into that. But first, like always, like every week, we're going to get into some nifty nerd news. All right, boys and girls, I hope you guys are ready for this week. Nifty Nerd News, what is this, March 9th, 2020? Uh, Of course, what I'm recording this is a few days before, so, you know, maybe something happened since, like, last Saturday that I might have missed. I don't know. We try to pick it up on uh, the social medias if it's anything huge that I want to talk. But... It's not. <laughs> uh, or so far not. I, I don't know. You know, I'm talking, I am speaking for future BriFi as past BriFi, and we don't know. So maybe, the, uh, who knows? Let's, just, you know, let's just get into this. Let's quit talking about this time conundrum. What is this? The Flash? What are we? The Avengers? What is that? Oh, that's my phone telling me, hey, maybe you need to take a breath. It's the Breathe app on Apple Watch. I don't know if you guys have one. It always comes up at the least convenient time. That's like, hey, even a minute of breathing can reduce stress. I'm going to mute for today because I don't want to breathe. No. <laughs> no, talking about that uh, before we get into the Nivity Nerd News, there was this funny shower thought that I read. So on Reddit, there's a subreddit called Shower Thoughts where, you know, it's like those thoughts that you have in the shower that are so kind of stupid but so just profound at the same time. You know, like you're high or some shit like that. That's kind of what shower thoughts are. They're like weed thoughts. Uh, But one of them was about breathing. And it was like uh, every breath you take are like, or no, no, no. God, I was trying to remember it off the top of my head. No. uh, So it was like every moment you are two minutes away from dying, but every breath you take restarts that timer. Like that was like, like, you know, if you stop breathing, you'll suffocate to death and die. Uh, in actuality, as long as, you know, if it's you who purposefully stopped yourself from breathing, you'll knock yourself out, and then your body will kick in to start breathing. But um, it was just kind of like one of those stupid, profound thoughts, like, oh, yeah, like, every breath I take, <sighs> like, that restarts the timer on, like, how long I can live without oxygen, you know, so I got to breathe again. Oh, God, now I'm purpose. I'm so focused on my breathing now. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I hope you are too. No. Okay. Nifty Nerd News time. So up first, guys, the Batman has been adding some people to their cast list. Uh, the most recent casting is Max and Charlie Carver. They're twins, which is crazy. Um, really didn't know too much about them. Uh, quick IMDb shows that they're pretty famous for like uh, the Desperate Housewives. They've been on The Leftovers, Teen Wolf. Max has been in some stuff that I really enjoy, uh, like the Halo series Forward Onto Dawn, which was pretty cool. I think he plays like the main character's older brother. And uh, Charlie, he was in a show that I'm very fond of called The League. And The League is a comedy series that centers around guys who play fantasy football and the crazy annex and assholishness. That these guys are just, it's crazy. It's fun. I, I recommend it. Even if you're not a fan of fantasy football, uh, if you're a fan of just like comedy and people being in cringy situations, I totally recommend the league. But anyway, so twins. The Batman's adding twins to their movie, which is pretty crazy. It's pretty weird. It, why? You know, like, is it like, oh, well, we got one of them in case something happens. We got another one. The good Lord gave us two. No. Um, so I was trying to think, like, who could they play? You know, could they do, like, this crazy, like, two-face type thing where, like, like it's two people or I don't, I don't know. Like, I was just trying to think some weird stuff. But then I started to, like, get a little bit smarter about it and think to myself, like, well, what are some like famous twins or siblings in the DC universe that we could possibly see on the big screen? You know, um, of course, I think a lot of people's initial thoughts are the Wonder Twins. No, um, Zan and Jaina, you know, brother and sister. Yeah, they're twins. They're power. They got powers and stuff. <clears throat> and I guess you could do like. Zan and Jay, you know, like Jay and Silent Zan. I don't know. Uh, um, of course, uh, Jay and I, she can turn into any living creature, and Zan, he can transform into just every bit of worthlessness that ever existed. <laughs> I'm a bucket of water. Yes. <laughs> but I don't know. And I don't think the Batman movie is going to go that route. We've had a lot of news saying we're going to get a lot of Batman Rogue Gallery going on here and i think that's pretty cool uh, i'm guessing they're gonna be villains um and it was just weird trying to think about it like um you have one that i thought of and i don't know if a lot of people will think about this one so deathstroke actually has i think like three kids he's got two boys and a girl one boy is much older and then the younger uh, boy and girl i think they're twins or very close in age but i thought to myself um uh, what if you took grant and jericho wilson and made them close to the same age. And hell, even make them twins. You know, it could be really weird or really cool like that. Uh, like I said, there's Sons of Deathstroke who pretty much kind of learn under him. And uh, there's some other backstory, I think, with Jericho where he tries to be a hero. Or like the sister tries to be a hero, something like that. Uh, and then maybe they try to be just like chaotic neutral in a way. Or just like neutral mercenaries in a way. So what's cool about that too is we have had um, Deathstroke introduced into the dc universe which is pretty neat now it was in like what justice league or whatever so he's much older and now we're kind of going back in time to a younger batman uh and i don't know the dc like universe timeline as far as the movie's concerned it's all over the place does the batman take place among like the new dc stuff uh what what the hell's gonna happen is what i'm gonna say you know now that ben affleck is gone um like what the hell <laughs> but i thought that would be cool you know uh they they don't have to be powered they just have to be good shots and just really crafty uh which i think would work really well against like batman in some sense or maybe like one's kind of good and the other one's kind of bad i don't know but i i like that way it keeps them grounded keeps things from getting too out of control if you want to go like powered people or like Maybe not powered, but bigger, like, superhero-ish people. There's another brother duo, and I think they're even twins, uh, Hawk and Dove. Uh, back when they first came out, I think Dove's been replaced by a, f a female character in more recent iterations. But back when they first started, uh, Hawk and Dove were, like, crime-fighting brothers. One was really violent, and the other one was kind of a pacifist. I guess you could guess which one is which, and Hawk and Dove. Um, 
and they, you know, they compromised their beliefs to help the greater good, you know. While one was very violent, he was willing to work with his brother and maybe not kill people. Um, and the other one, while he was a pacifist, he knew when to put up the fisty cuffs uh, like his big bro or, I don't know, his hawk brother uh, to get it done. I don't know. But these are just some, like, brother-sister combos that are, are just sibling combos that I was thinking of that aren't too, like, what everyone's been saying, you know. I haven't heard anyone talk about hawk and dove, and I just happened upon them while I was searching uh, I knew Deathstroke had one son. I believe that was a uh, Grant or no Jericho, and that was because of some obscure. Like I just picked up a Batman book that just happened to have him in it. So like, yeah, you know. Um, but I think that'd be cool. I think the Grant and Jericho Wilson like sibling thing could be cool you make them twins would make things a little more interesting a little more creative i don't know but i i thought they would fit well in the batman universe um with people who aren't powered but like doing some shady shit in gotham so i don't know we'll see uh speaking of the batman movie dude they've been releasing new images left and right uh we've seen the bat suit we've seen what um robert pattison's looked in the bat suit and i gotta say I dig it, you know. Even back when they announced it, before we even saw any images of the of the movie and stuff like that, or, or filming, I was all for Robert Pattinson. You know, I I think he's a good actor. I think he's got a good look, great chin line, like jawline. So I, I really honestly felt like he could do a pretty damn good job, despite everyone being like, "Oh, sparkly vampire bats!" Like, "Ooh, bull fucking shit, guys!" Give the dude a chance. He's he's a great actor, and uh, this is only going to Prove it. Prove it. Uh, others, cool stuff that we've seen, though. The Batmobile, which looks like this badass muscle car. Um, I'm down with this, man. Uh, it definitely looks like we're going, like, year one or, like, early stuff with it. Um, like, maybe, like, when he first starts trying to be Batman, which we've kind of already done before with, like, Batman Begins. But I don't know. Like... It's kind of hard because a lot of stuff that you see with the bat suit and images looks like a very prototypey bat suit, especially like the Batmobile looks kind of prototypey, not like a Batman who's been doing this for a while. So that's why I feel like it's kind of year one stuff. Um, we, I guess we'll have to wait and see, but I'm digging it. I, I'm I'm down with uh, the Batman, uh, Matt Reeves version of the Batman and um I'm down with Robert Pattinson as being the Batman. And they've already like alluded to like all these rogue villains that they're going to have. So it's crazy, dude. Like, they're building the Bataverse is what they're doing. Um, speaking of the Bataverse, uh, some f- crazy stuff from Christian Bale and Tom Hardy. Both of them, well, one of them has been confirmed. The other one, it's rumored. So I'll start with the rumor first. It's rumored that Tom Hardy is going to be uh, or scored the role as uh, Frankenstein's monster. Um, I think it's Universal. They, you know, they're going back trying to like redo a bunch of like these old monster movies, like The Mummy, uh, Dracula, Frankenstein's Monster, Creature from Black Lagoon. So, like, the plan is to bring all these movies back and kind of like that old school way, and. Some sources are suggesting that Tom Hardy is uh, almost a shoe in for the role of Frankenstein's monster. I don't know. Like, I've read the book uh, by Mary Shelley. Really enjoyed it. Really liked it. I don't know if I want to see a movie about it. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it could be really cool. Who who knows? Uh, and sometimes those old school movies are kind of neat to watch, you know. And so we'll see. We'll we'll see. I'll leave that one to the Colt Forty Five guys. You know they're they're way better at movie shit than me. Uh, the other uh, guy, Christian Bale, of course, who played Batman, looks like he's making the switch from hero to villain, which I'm pretty stoked on. Um, Tessa Thompson, who's I mean she's done a lot of cool shit, but uh, with Marvel plays the Valkyrie uh, with Thor Ragnarok. And, of course, we're having uh, Thor Love and Thunder coming up here shortly. Uh, I think it's getting ready to start filming. Uh, Jane Foster looks like she's going to be picking up the hammer and becoming the Thor, uh, the female version of it. And um, Tessa Thompson, in an interview, I can't remember with who, uh, Entertainment Weekly, I don't know, it was was on the 
one of the – I think it was at Grammys. I can't remember where or whatever. But she let slip in the conversation that Christian Bell was joining the cast to play the villain in the movie. Who that villain's going to be? I have no idea, but I'm pretty freaking stoked on this. Taika Waititi with Christian Bale, um, he, he kind of gets a bad rap, of course, because he lost his temper that one time, but I can't imagine anyone not having fun with Taika Waititi, and uh, I think uh, Chris Hemsworth, he's a fun dude to be around, Tessa Thompson, um, Natalie Portman, so you got a bunch of people, uh, really big name actor. I mean, even Natalie Portman's coming back for the role. Uh, so I'm really stoked to see what happens. Uh, seeing Christian Bell play, I mean, he's played a, a villain before in the past, but like, it's weird because he said he was kind of done with superhero movies. He kind of wanted nothing to do with superhero movies, whether it be heroes or villains. So what about Thor Love and Thunder brought him back? Was it, you know, just the Disney dump truck of money that was like well how can you say no to this they're offering me my own disney park no uh, but is it that or is there really something to taika waititi in the script that really um made bale say you know what fuck it let's give it a shot you know so i'm pretty excited to see what happens here maybe maybe this is the movie that brings in um um, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, and Christian Bell was like, oh, I want to fuck that dude up. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Who knows what they're going to do with Thor, Love, and Thunder? I mean, we have the idea with Jane Foster, uh, Valkyrie's back, Taika Waititi. Like, all those great characters are back. So I'm excited to see what happens. I'm curious and optimistically curious to see who Christian Bell is going to play and how he's going to portray that character because I'm always just – thought of him as a very serious actor so we'll see uh, moving forward and the last bit of news and i feel like it's something we need to talk about not only because of how serious it is but also because now it is effectively it is it is um directly affecting my life <laughs> and like uh, my likes and pop culture and comic books and that's um covid19 aka the coronavirus um fears from uh we'll just keep calling it coronavirus because that's what a lot of people know it as although it is uh actually been renamed uh covid19 stands for coronavirus um I forget what the D stands for, <laughs> uh, 19 being the year 2019 when it uh, first started. Um, but fears from coronavirus has decimated the convention world here recently. Um, like Emerald City Comic Con, uh, I think C2E2 had some issues as well, uh, where big comic book companies and just big companies in general are starting to pull out of these conventions. They're trying to protect their employees from getting sick. Um, there's been a lot in the news about people dying from it, from complications from COVID-19 or coronavirus, a lot being people already with compromised immune systems and stuff, much like with a lot of diseases. Um, you know, a lot of people that are dying – are at risk, you know, they either have weakened immune systems, uh, respiratory problems, stuff like that. Um, but, you know, this is to help stop the spread of that all, you know, this is to help, you know, to keep you safe, keep your family safe. And so that's why a lot of companies are choosing to back out of conventions because obviously a convention is just a clusterfuck of people who knows their health and whatnot. But also if you just put all those people together and one person just happens to be there and infects. And I think what the incubation or in whatever the thing or like how long it stays in your system is like over two weeks or close to two weeks. I, I can't remember exactly. So it stays in your system a long time, even if you're not showing symptoms of it. And so a lot of damage could happen in two weeks. So I get the fears from big companies and why they want to uh, keep their, you know, keep their employees safe and keep their writers and artists that are um, contracted to them safe. Um, at the same time, this really sucks for a lot of events that are, reliant on these people to show up or relying on celebrities relying on creators and so it really sucks to have this happen you know um hell hollywood 
the the Hollywood Reporter expects five billions in losses, five billion dollars in losses due to one the Chinese market, like they're closing all their theaters because of what's happening over there. You have a, uh, Italy and you have South Korea. Uh, they're getting uh, – you're seeing dips and people going out to watch movies in those places because of what uh, COVID-19 is doing over there. Um, it's possible to see big drop in the U.S. for the same reason. So, I mean, it, it's just crazy, dude. Like, it's affecting the entertainment industry. It's affecting sports. It's affecting just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and I, I don't know, you know, like – the only thing I can tell you guys is just wash your hands, have hand sanitizer where you can find it. Um, don't worry about the face masks because uh, they're not about keeping stuff out. It's really about keeping your crap in. So only get a face mask if you yourself are sick. So that way when you're coughing and sneezing or whatnot, you're not shooting out all kinds of just covid mist into the air or whatever shit. Um, so don't go out and just start buying face masks because they're going to be people out there who actually need it um and you know i just caught wind that south by southwest here in austin texas got canceled because one big company is pulling out a lot of people are worried if you guys haven't heard of south by southwest it's like a huge um i mean festival uh, I, I don't like there's music there's tech there's gaming there's all kinds of shit that happens uh through like march with south by southwest uh it's massive dude like the whole city goes on lockdown because of traffic now it's going to go on lockdown because of covid19 um but it's just some crazy stuff dude so after all these companies are pulling out there's pretty much no one left uh uh, I think even some musical acts have dropped out, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so the city of Austin made the tough decision to cancel South by Southwest for this year, which that is tough to do, man. That's a huge, huge um, bringer of money. It's a huge like income for the city uh, for those uh, few weeks that this goes on. Uh, and so it really sucks, dude. Um I don't really ever go because I don't like being in the city when it's just full of people. And if it's going to turn into the Division 3, I definitely sure as hell don't want to go. <laughs> so just trying to keep my family safe, too. Uh, not that we're scared to go out or anything. Hell, my wife just went to the movies today with some people. Uh, me and my son, we've been to playgrounds and stuff. You know, we just, you know, make sure we're washing our hands. Make sure we're not, like, touching and hugging on people that are already coughing and shit. And, uh, you know, we're trying to take care of ourselves, trying to kick, take care of our friends and family the best that we can. And I suggest that you guys do, too. Uh, hopefully this shit all passes over by the time Comic Palooza comes around, because I don't know what I'm going to do if Comic Palooza gets um, canceled. Uh, I, there's no win of that happening. There's no reason to believe that it will happen uh, uh, unless things get really bad. Um, so we'll see. Uh, May is a long time away, and it's May 22nd through the 24th. So that's a very long time away from now. They've still announced new guests. So I, currently I'm not concerned. Um, we'll, we'll see, though. Well, we'll just have to keep an eye out. I know my wife it definitely gave me a look like, dude, if Corona's still going on, we ain't going. And I was like, but but panels and like thing, like obligations that I have that I enjoy doing there. And she's like, no. I was like, well, I want a divorce. No. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for the nifty nerd news and the healthy nerd news. Uh, let's move on to the comic book that I want to review for this week. That was weird. That's, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's move on to Cage. Hey, this is Liz. Hey, this is Heather. And we are Nerdy Bitches Podcast. A show where two geeky ladies podcast their way through pop culture. From movies and TV to our regular book club and everything in between, we bring you our favorite fandoms with a feminine eye. We are talking Star Wars, Star Trek, DC Marvel, comic books, and anime. And don't forget sci-fi, fantasy, action movies, video games, D&D, board games, and so much more. Be sure to check us out on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Podbean, or wherever you find awesome podcasts. You can also find us hanging out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and at nerdybitches.com. See you soon. All right, guys. Thanks for sticking around for the Bri-Fi Podcast comic book review of 2016's Cage. 
art and drawn art and drawn art and story by uh, Gindi Tartakovsky. 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 Man, that's a weird name to say. <laughs> um, I like I've mentioned before earlier in the podcast. I'm a huge fan of Dexter's Lab. I loved uh, all the morning cartoons that I got to uh, watch and be a part of. And um, it's just sorry. Uh, my wife texted me, so I was looking at the at my watch. Um, so you know, I was a big fan, huge fan of all those cartoons growing up. And when I heard that Gindy Tart uh was writing and drawing a book for Marvel uh, called Kate, well, one Luke Cage, my favorite character, so I was already interested. And then when I saw that name, I was like, who? Because obviously I don't remember any freaking names, but then they're like, oh yeah, the creator behind like Dexter's Lab, and I was like, oh yeah, like let's get into this, man. Um, it was funny because like I remember my, one of my first thoughts on this was Action Hank, you know, uh, Action Hank being like a movie star slash action hero from Dexter's Lab, and there's like that episode where they like grow beards, like Dexter grows a beard and they like join beards together to like fight off. I don't even remember aliens or just bad guys. Some crazy shit happening. And um, so I was really expecting Action Hank, but just now he's called Action Cage. Um, it's slightly different, but it definitely feels like a cartoon uh, episode uh, stretched out for between four uh, comics, you know. So we get a, a bunch. There, a lot happens, but not a lot happens. You know, like I said, it just feels like one episode of a of cage movie like if we could get a cage animated series i would be so down for this and it's four years after this comic book came out so i don't think it's gonna happen but god man if it happened with a uh, tarkovsky doing it i i would 100 100 be down with this especially after reading uh these four issues of cage i was just really blown away by it i was really excited art style just like you would expect uh, if you remember Dexter's Lab. And the subject matter, while stays kiddish, gets a little kind of like trippy. And like at some point, oh, it gets real psychedelic. But, uh, you know, let's just get into it. So, man, you get the first issue already. We know we're set in the 70s. It's the golden age of heroes. Um, it's the age of platform shoes, chest hair, uh, masked bank robbers wearing roller skates. So, like, you already know, like, oh, we're going to have some fun today, man. Um, so, um, action, I mean, Luke Cage, not Action Hank. Uh, he just, dude, man, he just uh, steps on the scene, destroys these bad guys, just rocks these fools on wheels dude um then he like afterward he like goes plays basketball with kids like donks on their basketball goal destroys it completely and he's like peace them out bros like they're just like luke like or like cage like he just like destroys bad guys destroys children's dreams and now he's gonna go meet up misty knight his uh honey bunny i'm guessing uh for some dinner you know a dinner date but she's a no-show and he's like what Nobody stands up, Cage. So he goes to find out, like, what the hell's going on. Turns out Misty, uh, Misty Knight, not even at her apartment. Like, we don't know where the hell uh, she's went. But then Cage gets jumped by, like, these street-level thugs, uh, including, like, uh, Black Mariah's there. I think the ex. Or, like, there's a bunch of, like, people I've never really heard of other than Black Mariah. And they're all, of course, like, f hilariously drawn. And the only way that... Uh, Tervats, Tartoski, Tar Gindi, <laughs> Gindi, Gindi, the, the artist <laughs> could, uh, the only way Dexter's lab could showcase them. Um, and so it's some pretty cool stuff. Uh, Luke Cage ends up getting knocked out and, uh, caged basically. So then we hop into the issue number two. Cage is like, you can't cage the cage, busts out of the cage. And now he's running through the, like he dives off a boat, goes into a jungle. And now we're having like this crazy jungle run, escape from cat people Island or some kind of weird shit like that. Um, and this is the issue where things start to get a bit trippy. Uh, like him running through the, the, the jungle starts to get really crazy and really funny. And the art style gets really cool. And then he like comes across like shrooms or like, gas pollen i don't know plant gas i don't know whatever and then he just gets super psychedelic and starts like freaking out like things get like 
Wizard of Oz trippy, like literally. And so it's really fun. And like these books are like 22 pages long and it, it, it spends 10 pages of crazy like splash page psychedelic Luke Cage. And it's badass and I love every moment, uh, every moment of it. The colors, the art style, it gets really fun. Um, then, you know, he passes out. Then he wakes up, issue three. This is like the second time he just like passes out, wakes up. Issue three, it's tournament arc time, man. Yeah, we're having a shonen manga here. Um, it's heroes versus animal villains. Uh, we find out where Misty Knight went. She was one of them captured. I think like Dazzler, Iron Fist. So, you know, Luke Cage and his homies all get trapped. And now they got to fight against like animalized villains or like someone's been making chimeras out of human animals and making them fight in this crazy tournament there's this creepy old dude i think his name's like dr zoo or some weird shit like that um but basically there can only be one and there can only be cage because obviously he's the hero of this book if you haven't guessed by the title um so basically everyone's a loser like everyone just keeps getting beat in crazy creative ways you think they're gonna win and then they get beat uh luke cage no no he just smashes fools with his fist like luke cage just can't be tamed he can't go down Uh, of course he fights his way all the way to the top where he wins and his prize well now he's got to fight that stupid old dude like (laughs) why this like and it's funny there's some jokes made like luke cage makes jokes of this old dude old dude like pulls back his robe to reveal he's just this creepily skinny old man and he's like <laughs> like i'm gonna throw up and it's funny uh it turns out old dude though he got some fucking moves man he starts whooping up on luke cage just destroying him fist foot oldness and <laughs> male pattern baldness all kinds of creepy shit um but you gotta remember when you're fighting luke cage it's a boss fight so he gets a second health bar and so now with the second health bar, Cage is like, all right, man, I ain't playing games with you. So now fisty cups, bam, smack, bam, like all kinds of crazy shit, like actual sound effects, man. I'm giving it to you because I'm so into this book right now. It's stupid. Don't get me wrong, but it's a lot of fun. It's stupid fun. Like I said, it's like watching a Saturday morning cartoon. Um, they're trading blows back and forth. It's like Superman versus Doomsday, only this time. Shrek a pow. Superman wins. Cage wins finish him (laughs) um he ends up winning the old guy gets knocked out i don't even know what happens to him and what even happens to all the other like all the other heroes who lost their fights they just kind of disappear like they don't disappear but they're just kind of gone from the story so were they still held captive and if they were like were they going to just be forever captives until they could win the tournament like there's a lot of questions i had that never get answered in this story (laughs) And then by the end of it, Luke Cage is back in New York, and yay, surprise party gets thrown for him where all the heroes are there, even those not involved in the crazy animal tournament. And Spider-Man's there, and Captain America's there, Doctor Strange is there. You know, all Luke Cage's favorite people, (laughs) which was silly and fun, and I enjoyed it, you know. Um, Like I said book is full of artwork that really brought back and brought home some memories the story was fun lighthearted, never too serious but definitely action-packed which i really enjoyed um i would really really like i said it before but i would really love a marvel cartoon that was just this you know it was just it could be heroes for hire where they just go around trying to make money and fight and talk mess on each other like Luke Cage and Danny Rand just being stupid. But I don't know. Like I said, this book came out in 2016. If it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. I'm going to put it out on Twitter. I'm putting it out on Twitter. I'm tagging Marvel and I'm saying, you make this shit happen. You get Gindy Tartar Sauce Kowalski and you put this shit into motion for me, all right? (laughs) Um, I loved it. I, I definitely... I mean, you're not going to, if you're not a, I mean, if you're a fan of Luke Cage, you're going to love this book. I think you're going to be taken back by it. If you're a fan of like those old cartoons, you're going to love this book. I think if you're just like, you know, you're just a Marvel guy or just a comic book person, this might be a little different of a read and you might not really get it. There's nothing to get here, man. It's just a story. It's just a fun little story that's a joy to read. And I, I, I would suggest you just check it out. 
uh, but don't go into it too seriously. If you go into it like, oh, this is like the next Marvel event book, it's not. And at no time does it try to be, it doesn't try to be what it's not, you know, uh, and what, which is what I love and what I respect from this book. You know, you get a lot of comics that come out here that try to be bigger than what they are. They try to tell a story that's grander than what it needs to be. And it's sloppy. It's it's messy. Uh, this book is sloppy in places. Um, not the art style. Art style is crisp throughout. Uh, like I said, there's some story holes that don't really get explained or anything like that. And that's what I mean by sloppy. But it fits with the book. You know, it doesn't need to explain everything to it. It doesn't need to do all that. It just needs to kick ass. And that's what Cage does. It kicks ass from the start of issue one to the end of issue four. So I loved it, and I suggest everyone check it out. Positive charge from the Bri-Fi podcast. And probably my most, like, detailed review of any book that I've done. <laughs> I loved it. I hope you feel it. Hopefully you guys will, too. Um, anyway, that's it for the Bri-Fi podcast, guys. Uh, that's all we really wanted to talk about. That's all I really wanted to um, share with you guys. There is something else I want to review but I think I'm going to save that for next week. It's a movie on Netflix called Freaks. So definitely check it out if you have Netflix. It does deal with powered people or a powered person, people. It's fairly mysterious. And um, there are some things like with this book, uh, like with Cage, like, oh, that's not really explained in great detail. But... For the purpose of the story, it's not necessary. It's not something that you necessarily need to know. So don't overthink it when you're watching Freaks. Enjoy it for what it is, and I think you will really find something out of it. My wife wanted to check it out. I actually had no interest in it because it, I didn't know what it was. I had no. I, I what I, it didn't turn out what I thought it was going to be, and what I thought it was going to be was kind of like this horror thriller kind of movie, like a Quiet Place or bird cage stuff like that and that's what i expected going into freaks it's not and i was delightfully surprised by what this movie turned out to be and uh i think you guys will too we'll talk about it more uh, next week because i do want to review it along with the comic book that we're going to uh, review which we're going back to uh, thor god of thunder uh, so be prepared for some more debauchery coming from our favorite odin son but that's it for the podcast this week, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of it. If you like what you hear and you like uh, the things that I talk about, please let me know. Rate me. Apple Podcasts, Podbean, all that stuff. Anywhere you can find a podcast, you can find my podcast. Rate, review, comment on all those sites. Also, if you want the fun to continue, follow me on social media and gaming. Uh, everything is at Bryfy Podcast, B-R-Y-F-Y Podcast. And that's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. If you want a game, it's just Bryfy Pod, no cast on the end of it. And you can find me on Nintendo Switch and Xbox Live. But that's going to be it, guys. Uh, we're going to take a week break. By that, I mean, like, I'm just going to take a break for the rest of the week. And then you'll see me next week, Monday. Like I said, we're talking Freaks on Netflix movie. Check it out. And then Thor, God of Thunder, issues 18 through 25. So if you have Marvel Unlimited, which I suggest you get, it's a great way to read Marvel books. Check it out. Read along with me. We'll talk about it next week. And if you have a Netflix subscription, which I think most of us do, check out Freaks. I think you'll like it. And then we'll talk about that next week as well. Bri-Fi out.